Well, hi again, folks. I'm Greg Flynn, the Public Information Director here for the City of Pearl, and welcome into This Week in Pearl. We are blessed to be joined by our Rankin County Tax Collector, Ms. Carolyn Gilbert, and it is very, very happy to have you in here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, you've got a big day coming up next week. Yes. It's uh, the election time here for county and state officials. Um, hot on the trail? Hot on the trail, busy every day. <laughs> Ready for Tuesday to roll around. What is it like having to, to balance the two with, with running an election and then also getting the day-to-day -day duties of the job going? Right. So um, I, I was telling somebody earlier that I think I'm a little different than some elected officials because I actually have a desk job too, and I like that piece. Um, I think that I take a little bit of a role in trying to help my team to, to do some of what um, has been put on their shoulders as well. And so I do. I have a desk job that I do every day. And then um, out and about meeting with constituents and lunches and breakfast and um, talking about my role and what our staff do. And so, I, yeah, I juggle a lot, but, um, but I enjoy it. It's fun. <laughs> well, a lot of people might say, you know, what exactly does the tax collector do? Now it's officially defined in Rankin County as uh, you're responsible for the collection of all taxes on land and buildings, motor vehicles, mobile homes, uh, fees on small aircraft, vehicle titles, mobile home registrations, and sales and use tax on motor vehicles, right? Correct. Uh, to add to that list, also, we handle county privilege license um, registration and, and the fees associated with that. We also do, um, once a year, we are responsible for county businesses that have beer license or beer permits. We are responsible for that as well. Um, and just to kind of elaborate a little bit on that, while that list is long, in my opinion. Um, I like to break it down kind of into transactional level, just the county alone, and I'm not including municipalities. The county alone has approximately 30,000 housetops, not necessarily apartments or, or mobile home parks, but 30,000 housetops. For each of those, you can assume there's a property, property tax transaction associated with it. You can also assume that they have at least one vehicle associated. So if we start at 30,000, we're now at 60,000. And you can also assume in the county that each of those housetops has a solid waste garbage payment associated with it. So we're now at 90,000 transactions per the county. We also collect for seven municipalities and two school districts. So when you start exponentially including the transaction volume, and we have approximately 25 staff through three offices that handle that. So it's a big job. Well, for our folks here in Pearl, so kind of uh, if you can break that down for them so they can understand it. So they go and they pay their car tag. Correct. At your office. Correct. Then what are you responsible for doing with that, okay. with that money? Yeah, so when someone comes into our office to pay, we are first and foremost, our initial step is that we are responsible for assigning, um, we don't determine, the Board of Supervisors determines, but we assign millage rates for each taxing district. So Pearl has actually a couple of different taxing districts. And so what we are responsible for doing is making sure the system is calculating the pro appropriately assigned millage rate. So when you come in with your vehicle title, your vehicle has an amount assigned to it. That amount is then entered into a formula, basically, and the formula spits out the amount that your car tag is gonna be. We take that money, we then, um, we have a centralized accounting function in the Brandon office. And so when we take that money, at the end of every day, we balance all of our, all of our money. And so we then deposit that in with our centralized accounting, our bookkeeper, and then she does another balance each day to make sure that you said you're, you balance, but we're gonna, we're gonna go back and double check. Everything's good, we then take it to the bank each day. This goes on every day throughout a month. At the end of a month, we are required by law to what we call settle. Settle means that in theory, my bank account should zero every month that every dollar that I take in has to be released back out to the city, school, fire districts, wherever it goes. Um, and so we have a couple of days each month where we do that process, and then we release all the funds to, to the, the municipalities and school districts that we collect for. Well, that was the one thing I found very interesting in talking to you before was that 
you know, your focus is not just on collecting the money, but you want to expedite the customer service to get that out as quickly as possible to the city of Pearl. Right. So one, one of the things that, that I had the misfortune and fortune, I'll go both ways. I, my first year in office was during COVID. Um, and I had a tough decision to make as to whether or not we were going to continue to serve during COVID or if we were going to shut down. The state did not allow for quote unquote full shutdown. So I knew that our county is so big and we are so dependent upon for for our dollars that there was no way I could physically shut our office and there was no way that I could cut off funding to anybody that we that we pay. Um, There are obviously mechanisms in place for emergency situations and the funding would have been there, but that would have been more work on someone else also. So my staff and I. We, we combined heads and they were all 100% with me and we continued to work all through COVID. What that meant for me was I got to work with them. I was doing everything they were doing. And so I was able to see the processes that were in place and I was able to see the things that we use and utilize and the things that we didn't need to utilize um, to, to start evaluating what's necessary and what's not. And it gave me a great hands-on opportunity to really see where we could, if it wasn't a rule or it wasn't required, why were we doing it? And it gave me a great opportunity to kind of analyze our needs and the must-haves and the ways that we were able to um, serve people, ask questions, and and get to to the bottom line of their transaction, all while creating some efficiencies in doing so. So I, I was blessed that I had that hands-on time because I really could go through. And, um, and then that gave me a lot of questions to ask the state to where I could say, do we have to do this or do we not have to do this? And, um, and it's just, you know, it's chipping away one little bit at a time. But, um, but there's a lot of things that if, if I know why, then I can figure out what we need to do with it. And so that really has helped us to, to cut down on some time in line. Well, what I really like is that you're still marrying old school with new school Correct. over there. There's a lot of people that are in this age, love the online. I don't want to deal with anybody. I just want to go on my phone, on my computer yeah. and, and uh, handle my business that way. But you still offer, you know, the customer service where you can come into the counter uh, down there in downtown Brandon. Uh, so you're really making it easy for however people want to use it. Yeah, and we're on the online. Um, that's another thing that I don't disagree. And there are so many people in all age ranges that would prefer the online. Just it, again, COVID did so much for us in the world as, as it changed our thought processes. But also um, the state um, has in the system where if your car tag is past the 15 day grace period, you can no longer renew online. So um, I'm, that's something that I'm really heavily working on at the state level to try to, to try to extend that a little bit because, you know, a lot of people just forgot or just I was out of town or I just, you know, and they just missed that little and there's nothing that says you should have to get in your car and come to me just because you are past the date. So, so I'm working at that level. Um, it, it's going to take a little while, but I'm, that, that is something that, that I'm hot on the trail for. <laughs> well, and you know, the folks in Pearl, they don't like to go east very yes. far. Yes. You know, they don't I, like to make that drive into that I, town to our east. And look, you're, you're talking to an eastern girl. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard to come west too some days. <laughs> <laughs> well, we accept that, yes, you know. Yes. <laughs> the whole eat dirt lives year round, it right? It does. So. It does. But I, but I married a, uh, it's hard to say. Oh. I married a pearl guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your husband Scott. Yes. Uh, yes. And you got uh, two great kids. So we have a 14 year old Garrett and a 12 year old Anna Claire, and they keep us busy. And um, we're just loving the season of life we're in right now. Well, what is it? You know, most people grow up and they say, very few of them say, I want to be the tax collector. Right. So what is it that, that makes that job appealing to you? What do you love about being tax collector? So I am a certified public accountant and I have for tw- almost 20 years before I started this job, I worked in governmental and nonprofit accounting, did a little bit of banking stint, but um, my my passion has always been rules and regs. I mean, it just, it, it flows naturally to me. I get it. I've always dealt with money. Um, and so when this position, when I found out the previous tax collector was retiring, 
it really just seemed like a great fit. Um, I had a wonderful employer before this and I went to them and I said, here's what I'm thinking about doing and they 100% supported me. Um, and so you don't find that often and um, and they were also welcoming if it if it had not worked out, I had a place to stay. Um, so it's not like I was leaving a job or, or you know, running from something. Um, I, I was perfectly fine where I was, but it was just that little tug of it might be time for, for try something different. And this was a natural fit. It was the perfect natural fit because it was the handling money. It was the rules and regs. It was people. I have no problem with people. Um, and it, it was basically everything wrapped up into one. And again, it was such a natural transition that um, I don't, I, you wouldn't understand it if you weren't me. I, I can't even explain it to my husband as to how seamless this really was. Well, and it's one of those things, you know, in, in any public servant job, you know, it's not about the money because people will certainly be able to make a whole lot more in the private sector. It's just a calling to be able to serve. I mean, that's kind of where it comes from, right? Correct. Um, I just... In in my past employment, I worked at a um, mental health, mental and behavioral health um, nonprofit. And while I handled the money, seeing the clients and the families, and and we, you know, I, I talked to them through a lot of their um, issues, just from financial situations. And you just really, when you have conversations with people, and you really understand where they're coming from and what's going on in their life, it really makes you take a quick look at yours. And um, it is not hard to help people. It is not hard at all. And I, I work a lot with my team as well. Um, there, you know, you, you have a, I think everybody has a place in life and I think everybody has a, a purpose in, in what they're doing every day. And so whether it be with my team or um, a customer coming in, everybody has something that they're dealing with every day. And I've lived a lot of life. Um, and so I think that I always have a perspective that I can that I can provide. And I tell my team all the time, I say, you know, no matter what somebody walks in here with, we don't have to meet them where they are, that we can we can bring them to, to a, a different place. And so that we, we use that a lot. Well, and I certainly appreciate the fact that your stabilizing focus for home obviously falls on your husband, Scott, since he's the pearl guy, he brings all the rationale to it. Uh, but it is, uh, it's been a lot of fun um, learning about what the tax collector does. And I really think a lot of people out there really don't understand what you, what you guys do other than they want my money again. Yes. <laughs> Death by taxes is the quote that I hear a lot, <laughs> but we really do. I mean, it, we know we are, we are well aware when, when someone is coming in our office or dealing with us from, from an outside, whether it be online or on the phone, that we're not the first play. We're not Disney world. We're not the, the pick, um, <laughs> but we certainly, certainly try to make it as easy and painless as it possibly can be. Um, that's, that's our ultimate goal is to, you know, we're not going to make you, quote unquote, happy, but hopefully <laughs> we will not make you um, miserable. <laughs> you make it as painless yes, as humanly possible, yes, right? Exactly. As palatable. Exactly. Well, Caroline, you're doing a great job. Thank you. And we certainly wish you uh, luck as the election comes up. Caroline Gilbert, you're yes. currently sitting tax collector Correct. running for re-election. So uh, if you want to get a look at where your polls are, it's going to be on the City of Pearl website, cityofpearl.com. We've got all the precincts. It's not your normal municipal precincts. It gets confusing sometimes yes. um, when you have the county, state, presidential election. Yes. They're different than where you vote for your aldermen. So be sure to check that out there, the county polling sites, and we'll have those at cityofpearl.com. Caroline Gilbert, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. All right, everybody get out to vote on Tuesday. From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., it is our duty and certainly our right to do so. I'm Greg Flynn, and we'll talk to you again soon.